Hey guys, how's it going? Crane here. So the next expansion of Hearthstone was just announced. It is going to be Journey to Angoro. And Angoro is that like jungly dinosaur elemental mystery filled zone. And we kind of knew that because it was leaked like a month ago. And that kind of really killed all the hype because, you know, they post this tweet. It's like, oh, I wonder where I'm going with this axe and this hat. Could I be going to a mystery? Now you're going to Angoro. We know. Okay. So, you know, the, the hype was kind of, kind of lame this time around. And I actually kind of wish they didn't they didn't leak it. Um, you know, normally I'm all for getting into the info as soon as possible and learning in what they're going to be doing. And uh, you know, prior to this one, I had no advanced knowledge. I thought that's what I want, but really, it kind of enjoyed living the hype in the past, and I uh, kind of missed that experience this time around. All in all, though, the expansion uh, seems pretty interesting. They only released a few cards, but I think they really cherry picked them to highlight the big new mechanics that they have in store for us. So, first card here they have a volcano uh, shaman board clear deal 15 damage randomly split across all minions costs five overloads for two we've learned that overload is not exactly the cost doesn't exactly cost seven but actually in the standard format a lot of the cards that drop overload or take advantage of overload mechanics are actually going away so this card might more realistically cost seven ish um it's obviously a really crappy board clear when compared to raw damage values of other board clears but it's particularly strong i would imagine against just a ton of small things and you know things you have to kill multiple times perhaps though i imagine those still get i don't know it it seems it seems kind of wonky but uh i like the thematic of the card it blows up and hits random stuff seems like a fun card right but uh yeah you always have to doubt those fun cards from actually seeing play in Hearthstone. Then they had this uh, Verdant Longneck uh, Beast card, and the battle cry is Adapt, and Adapt is one of the new keywords here. So five mana, five four. You know nothing, nothing too special. It is a beast, but it is a druid card, and you expect the class cards to be particularly strong. And at five mana, I don't know what we're looking at these days for you know constructed viable, but it's at least seven seven. Uh, so, you know, can can it hit that? And then you look at the possibilities. They had six possibilities in their video. If you want to see the video, it's below. Uh, but I basically just covered everything in this one. So, you know, it's fine. Um, so these are six of the ten possible options. Can't be targeted by spells, three attacks. So, you know, if you gain three attack on a 5-4, you're at 8-4. 8-4 um, is, is not... Not bad for five mana if you're talking arena, but it's pretty bad for five mana if you're talking constructed. So really, it's it's not it's not a terribly good card, but because of the flexibility, it'll generally have um, a pretty big advantage when you play it. So you have to keep that in mind. The flexibility aspect makes a pretty big difference in these grindy matches, these tempo matches in some cases, but. Yeah, it's 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 difficult to really value a card on stats. We'll have to see. I, f I have a feeling that the adapt mechanic is probably better used on minions that hit the early game more. Because on like turn five, when you play something, it just kind of gets nuked if it's a big deal or ignored if it's not. And they had Pyros. I know it doesn't do a good job of showing the card here, but I just like ripped it from their info page. Um, so it's like a 2-mana two 2-2. Two, two. Legendary Mage Minion! And when it dies, it returns to your hand as a 6-6 six, six that costs 6. And when that dies, it returns as a 10-mana 10 10-10. Ten, ten. Wow! Yeah, that obviously kind of sucks. But, um, you know, it's, uh, it's alright. I mean, if you're playing a heavy, heavy control match, you kind of want that extra weight. Even then, it doesn't seem like totally insane. Um, but who knows? I mean, Reno Mage works right now. Uh, it's just like without Reno, it might might not work as well. So uh, Control Mage uh, might not exactly be a thing, and uh, Control Dex might not exactly be a thing. But if they're going to be a thing, this looks like a pretty good card, I guess. It's just uh, I've bet on uh, the Control meta so many times now, and I've lost that bet every time. So, you know, I... I Hopefully, you guys don't blame me for uh, not being too optimistic about this card's viability, but it's a pretty cool card. And the other little aspect that you might notice is that it is an elemental. So there we go. We have a new tribe. They are going to go back and fix all the cards that are previously kind of elemental-ish, and they're going to stick that tag on them. Um, again, the number of cards they, they showed in this uh, preview video was very, very small, 
So none of them actually use the tribe elemental, but I imagine because the tribe exists, some cards are going to make use of it. And that might make Shaman actually advantageous because they have a lot of their class cards naturally elementals. So maybe a thing to watch out for. Probably the most exciting thing is the new quest cards. So this is the new Priest Legendary. They said that each class is going to have a quest card, and we don't really know how they're going to work in terms of rarity and impact. So, um, you know, are they going to have two legendaries per class in the next expansion or just one? And we've already seen some legendaries are not quest cards, like we just saw the Mage legendary. So is Mage going to have, like, a crappy quest? Maybe. You know, we don't really know that. So it's kind of interesting to see. It's kind of interesting to wonder, you know, what direction, what kind of balance is all going to work around. But uh, so how does this work? So quest is a new type of card. It's essentially... A spell but it's a spell that kind of just sticks on your character kind of like a secret would and shows your progress and how close you are to achieving so uh, one cost card uh, you play it on turn one it always shows up in your opening hand uh, I actually asked the devs uh, right before making this video and uh, just to confirm because you never know for sure how these mechanics work it does take up a card slot in your hand so if you go first you start with three cards this is always going to be in your opening hand, but it's going to be one of those three cards. You're not going to get it as an extra card. So you basically um, have likely a crappier opening hand if you choose to include a quest in your deck. And this seems like a really overpowered card. I'm sure you guys fast forward to all the rest. Um, really, really powerful card. But you have to keep in mind, if you're playing Priest and you always have a worse opening hand than you should... Well, that's a pretty big cost. So, you know, uh, I don't know how viable these are going to be, but they're certainly very cool and very interesting, and I'm certainly going to try every single one of them. So for me, as a pretty casual, constructed player, all these cards are very exciting. But, uh, you know, if you really get, you know, into it and try to understand the viability of them, that might be a little bit challenging. So, you know, this quest, you, you have it on your board, and then if you summon seven Death Rattle minions... Uh, and summon is, is actually pretty good. You don't have to play seven death rattle minions. So if you can, you know, revive them, and priest can certainly do that. Nazoth, a few other cards, you know, make it happen. It's 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 definitely achievable. You know, you you are going to get this card out there, and it's going to be like you know the big reset. So um, it's it's a really high cost, really high reward, but because it takes that time, and the real question is going to be. Can you, on average, survive until that time in the given state in the meta at any given point? And that is going to be the question that will only be answered once the set has been released and people have toyed around with the cards for a few days. So we don't really know that. But overall, really, really cool cards. And I think they certainly did a good job of um, mechanically and thematically introducing some of the first few uh, Journey to Unguru cards to us. Uh, it looks like there is going to be a pack uh, purchase event. You get like 50 packs or 50 bucks, which is like, like okay, deal. Not bad, sure. Uh, hop on that. The reason I really like these is because, um, uh, you know, manipulating your Windows clock, you can actually kind of figure out when the expansion is going to be released. We don't really know that. Apparently, it's going to be in the spring, but I imagine we're going to have a pretty established date once people start purchasing these. So we'll see about that then. For now. Hope you guys are excited as I am, and I really hope to see some more amazing cards. The, the reality is, these cards, I think, are, are actually fairly underwhelming for constructed play, but they're really cool for arena play, and we know Standard Arena is coming, and we're probably going to see a lot of these. So, um, yeah, there's great things to look forward to, and uh, I'm excited to see what else they have in store for us in this expansion. Until then, hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.